Hopefully you have binge watched season three of Dream Home Makeover and you have fallen in love with every family and episode. Once you walk through our home that you will get that feel of just family and belonging and being whoever you are and being accepted and that's okay. Andrew and Bobby, the nicest family, walk down into their basement and it is sad. Did not meet all of the personality that their family has. We wanted it to feel welcoming and inviting and we did that by first figuring out what were the needs of the space. They wanted a ping pong table. They said that they could get rid of all their other game stuff. They said, we want an area to place our pizza boxes. And then Bobby really wanted a theater space. And he was throwing out ideas like, let's build a platform or we can dig it down and let's build a bar across the back of the sofa. And I'm like, oh, wow, okay. Lots of ideas here, let's rein this in. I think we can still give you all the things that are really comfortable and enjoyable and also look really great too. Also, Andrea and Bobby's kids had a few requests. We had a request for recliners, a glitter TV, and a map on the wall. So we were also trying to figure out how to incorporate those as well. We had this little nook behind the area where the fireplace was, and I felt like that was a great opportunity for us to do some built-in cabinetry and create like a little kitchenette of sorts. And I think that in basement spaces, it's really nice to have a place to set drinks and food, and this became that. And it also made sense of the wall. I, I did not feel like doing standalone recliners were the way to go in this space. Who am I kidding? I don't really like recliners. And so I was gonna give them something that had a lounge experience, but wasn't a recliner. So we did these chaise lounges. We did two in this inky blue fabric. So you can lean back, put your feet up, and they look great as well. We had a ping pong table that we found that converted into a dining table. So it was the perfect multi-purpose way to give them a place to sit down and eat but also a place to hang out and play games. I guess they once caught something on fire with a fireplace. And so they were like, it doesn't really need to be usable, but we have a firebox here. So we took out the old wood burning stove that was sitting in there. And we just utilized that as the focal point for one half of this open space. On the ceiling, I saw this as an opportunity to create some architectural interest in an area where there was not any architectural interest. We had some faux shiplap that had been added to little wing walls and covering up steel I-beams. And I think that by taking that away and focusing on the ceiling, we were able to add a lot of character, some of that rustic quality that they clearly love. And in a home with eight foot ceilings in the basement, you'd think we cannot add beams, but we just did a, like a four inch profile, kept them really shallow and it did not feel too low in there, but it felt a lot more interesting. By keeping the existing fireplace, we were able to save the cost of demoing and refacing the entire um, area, but it is an asymmetrical fireplace. It's off to one side and we added a cast concrete surround to give it some presence. But then we were left with this space on the right side of the fireplace. And so instead of just treating it like a typical hearth, we decided to create a window seat effect. And we did that by adding some pillows, placing some artwork, and then adding a sconce. I think the sconce made all of the difference. It's cozy and it's sweet. And so if you have some asymmetry in a built-in, Adding the one sconce off to the side, it's not a bad thing if they can't be symmetrical. In fact, I think it adds some charm. So here's how we made the basement not feel like a basement. And that is by swapping out the slider door. It was just kind of an dated slider door that didn't work very well. We swapped it for one that had a black frame with a grid profile on it. And that helped add architectural interest as well as the ceiling. Adding those beams added a lot of wow factor to the bones of the home. We also kept the brick fireplace, but we added a plaster and a paint to it. So it became an interesting focal wall. 
We had a sconce off to the right. So all of these things are finishes that just elevate, but we didn't have to um, completely redo everything. We just needed to choose a few well-selected additions to the space. One other thing that makes the basement feel less like a basement is the window treatments. We added drapes on all the windows that we could. And even though you probably won't close them because it doesn't get a lot of natural light, I think that adding that extra layer gives it a designer touch. It makes it feel more finished and complete. And it also raises your eye up to the ceiling. I've saved the best for last, the theater room. When we walked into this guest space, it was quite a large space, but it had um, two walls that made it so that you couldn't really see into that room. So we knocked out the closet and we opened that opening as wide as we could. We took out the old doors and then we used the back wall, which used to be the wall where the headboard went and did a massive built-in for a huge TV. And I realized as we were designing it that I didn't want this space to be white. I think that it feels counterintuitive to go dark in a basement, but I think if you have a small area that's a little bit more isolated, it can create a really intimate and cool vibe. What's interesting about this episode is that when I heard that we were designing a basement theater, I'm like, We've done that. Do you remember Trey Ennis? We did the Moody Theater experience. We had a lot of similar problems to solve. Small space, low ceilings, and I wanted to do it in a fresh way. So then we heard Andrew and Bobby loved blue. And of course, Trey had a Navy theater basement. So what did we do? We thought, how can we give them some of those same requests, but then do it in a completely unique way? We did wallpaper on the walls and we did a different blue tone. We also incorporated velvets instead of leather. I think just changing the materials is what makes it feel different. We did a large U-shaped sectional so they could all fit on the couch. An ottoman was the perfect solution in the middle because you can put your feet up, but then also add a really big tray for snacks. In the end, we were able to give them this modern rustic look with a few surprises, give Izzy that glitter iPad, and we were able to give Truman these recliners, which are actually Shay's lounges, and we were able to do a map on the back wall that is framed out. It feels like a piece of art and just blends really seamlessly into the space. Keep an eye out on all of our social platforms, Instagram, the blog, TikTok, we'll be sharing tips and tricks and also seeing how you've incorporated some of these design elements into your own home.